Now behind me I have something exclusive. It's a one of one. I never would have thought I'd see it with my own eyes. The Russian auto industry is capable of making much better SUVs than your typical UAS. I am experiencing some serious emotional disturbance right now. There had never been a seven-seat interior with this sort of configurability. You'll be one of the select few to have ever seen it. Welcome to Detail Garage 54. My name is Vlad and in this video we'll be laundering. Now behind me I have something exclusive. It's a one of one. And I never thought I'd see it in here, let alone be able to work on it myself. Allow me to tell you guys how this all began. January 14th. Weren't there like six of those? That's irrelevant. Is this one gonna be assembled? They're in the process of doing so. They'll give it to us after they finish wrapping it. Seven months later. The week was off to a typical start. We were full of energy after the weekend, and we were off to pick up a new car. They usually keep me in the dark as to what it'll be, which makes my reaction all the more genuine. Well, my dear friends, we're embarking on a 50-kilometer trip. We're basically driving to a suburb, barely even making it out of the city of Novosibirsk. Anyway, I'm assuming it's something big. What makes you say that? It's because they requested very specific information. They asked about our gate, which tells me that we're dealing with something really big. Go ahead and share your guesses in the comments. Me, I'm totally clueless. We're obviously gonna see it once we get there. I'm quite curious. Okay, so we've made it to some restricted area. We just drove through an enormous garage complex. Once you see this dude, you'll know what's up. Once I see this dude? Have I seen him before? So as soon as I saw Andre, I realized what's going on. And some of you guys might as well. Oh, what? Wait, is this for real? Wow, greetings to you. You already filming? Indeed we are. Okay, so the jig is up, I'm about to piss myself, but hey, I am not wearing any diapers today. Now, I've seen you on a bunch of different channels, but I never would have thought you'd be a guest on our channel as well. Well, here we are. This is just incredible. We've come here to pick up a Marussia. I've only ever seen one a single time in my life. This will be the second time. Not many people have seen this particular one. You'll be one of the select few to have ever seen it. And aside from seeing it, I can actually touch it, which makes it even better. You can even go for a drive. Really? Yeah, of course. That is awesome. Anyway, why don't we go inside? Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna walk there. I don't even want to go by car. So what specific model are we talking about here? It's an F2. It was an early attempt by Marussia Motors to show the world that the Russian auto industry is capable of making much better SUVs than your typical UAS. Uh, Wait, so it's an SUV? Indeed it is. Oh yeah, right. Oh my goodness. So I'm well aware of the brand, but this example is a one of one. Thank you. 
Welcome to the small country that is the Spectre Design Bureau. This car is being prepared to be put into a museum. And we've decided to entrust it to you with your meticulousness and professionalism. It's been sitting for quite a while, as I'm sure you can tell. Well, that is a pretty typical picture, especially... Yeah, so this is a mock-up. It's not quite a car. This is representative of what it could have looked like when made into an actual car. It was mostly made for car shows, though that wasn't the only purpose it served. Now, in the time period when this model was made, there had never been a seven-seat interior with this sort of configurability. The Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, Chevrolet Traverse, they were only starting to come out. Meanwhile, back in 2011, if I'm not mistaken, this already had a configurable seven-seat cabin that could accommodate a big family or a small security unit. <laughs> no, it sounds like you could have used it for light combat situations. I'll show you some pictures a bit later. This is how you fold the seats, and you can move them forward. Yeah, it looks easy enough. I'll call him back a bit later. Wow, it smells... That's the smell of leather. That is definitely leather. Albeit not new leather. Ideally, it needs to be vacuumed. And some cleaning on the inside, because it is quite messy. Yeah, it looks like it's been touring. I mean, look at all of that filth. The only thing missing are some bottles, a couple of coffee cups, potato chips and so on. You're absolutely right. Man, the exterior is just so awesome. What's it based on, by the way? It's a Sengyong Chiron. We took a Chiron, gave it a new body, which is representative of what it would have looked like. You know, I think if we had a bit more time and enthusiasm, we could have gotten the car ready for mass production. Granted, the styling would have been somewhat more conservative, but it was possible and I think it would have sold pretty well too. Here's something else I'd like to show you. This thing has sliding doors, though I can't show you how they work, unfortunately, because we've yet to fully restore the mechanism. But they can be made to work. They will work on the fully restored car. This actually doesn't have a B-pillar, so you can literally dive headfirst into the cabin. Yeah, just toss a couple of mats in there. It did work very well for me personally. I have a big family, and if I'd have to seat one of my kids, seat another one of my kids, and get the third one into the back with his hockey gear and all of that, well, opening the door every time to get a kid into the seat is way less convenient than using a sliding door. You slide it back, put them in there, and off you go. So this is a sort of compact minivan. Yep. On top of that, it has all-wheel drive and quite a bit of ground clearance. This would have worked beautifully in harsh Novosibirsk driving conditions. Yeah. For those who don't know, the roads in Novosibirsk are absolutely terrible. Year-round, in the winter, summer, doesn't matter. Well, there you go. This is so unbelievably awesome. There is just so much to take in. I don't even know where to start. Because this is crazy. Even just being at this location, I mean, this is a historic place, I guess you can call it. Because not many people would take on such a task as building a car from the ground up or restoring one that has long been lost and forgotten. Right now, we're literally in the sanctum for Marussia cars.
So how many Marussias are still left in the country? Including this one, if we are talking cars that can drive, then there are five in total. That's taking into account the one that Veterak Club restored and got running. Roman Rusinov has two of them, including a GT. Igor Yermilin also has a couple of them, including the new Marussia Rosa. But that doesn't really count as a Marussia. It's actually a bespoke vehicle. There's a car collector in Moscow who acquired a red one from us. Who else? Uh, Alexander Sertsen has a B1. Okay, that makes it six B1s. Also, there are three B2s that drive. Then there's the F2 and Gregory Zawison's car. So that's no more than 10 cars that are actually able to drive. I take it you have no idea how many unfinished and parted out ones are out there, right? There are parts scattered all over Russia. Trying to bring them together can become a bit of a challenge. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we're gonna have to leave now. It's too bad we can't spend a bit more time in here. We've loaded the Marussia, what's it called again? Marussia F2. F2, right. We've loaded the F2, which means Formula 2, I guess. Yeah, that's a good way to remember. Anyway, thanks for providing such an opportunity to work on this ridiculously exclusive vehicle. Apparently, parts for it don't even exist. And the estimated cost is probably... Astronomical, even for a mock-up. Anyway, I am so happy right now. Thanks again, and we're gonna leave now and not waste any more of your time. Send pictures. Will do. Okay, now it's back to base. I am experiencing some serious emotional disturbance right now. I mean, think about it. This car basically doesn't exist. Well, it existed only on paper. But now this thing... Andre was correct to call it a mock-up. Regardless, this mock-up... It's real, it drives. It's fully assembled and it's effectively an actual car. And we're the the only detailing center that is going to get the opportunity to work with this mega exclusive automobile. A bit of history. So, what do you think about this machine? 
I think it's quite unusual. It's eye-catching, unique. It really draws your attention. I don't even know what to compare this design to. Kinda looks like an aggressive sea turtle, you know what I mean? I mean like one of those big ones that lives for a really long time. Anyway, let me tell you a bit about the car. What it is and how it came to be. We have this media persona named Nikolai Fomenko. And a while back, he founded a sports car company called Marusium. They made a B1 and a B2. He then later decided to... build a premium crossover. Enter the Marussia F2. This particular example was shown at the Moscow Auto Show back in the day. People were raving about the Marussia B1 and B2 when they debuted, and they were followed up by this F2 concept car. This was criticized for its design by quite a lot of people, though others did like it. It is all a matter of taste at the end of the day. Anyway, so Nikolai Fomenko... He announced back then that the production version would cost 50,000 euro. This was of course back in 2010. Unfortunately, at some point, Nikolai Fomenko went bankrupt, and so did the Marussia car company. Any remaining cars were scattered all across the country. This one was being passed around from one firm to the next, and that was also the fate of some of the sports cars. The idea was to restore them, but the parts wound up in so many different places that, well, some people are simply unwilling to let them go, while others aren't ready to go through with building the cars. Well, that sort of thing does require lots of money and effort, after all to recreate something that's essentially lost. Yeah, this wouldn't be an easy thing to reanimate by any means. This is the F2 concept, but there was also an F1 concept car. Now, that car only existed as a clay model. It had no interior, there wasn't much to the car at all, aside from the base platform. Now, unfortunately, that concept was trashed. On orders from Nikolai Fomenko himself. Nobody has ever seen it. And there are only a couple of pictures of it floating around the internet. As for this one, there are a ton of pictures of it. Also, there are blueprints and the actual car itself. And it's still exactly the same as it was back in 2010. What you see right here is what you get. And since 2010, it hasn't been parted out, or broken or ruined, modified in any way. It's in the same exact condition as when it was presented in 2010 at the Moscow Auto Show. So we're about to begin work on this one of one example. And I think that's just fantastic. I mean, the design is just off its face. It is quite spectacular. Anyway, so... Let me lay out the game plan. This isn't going to be a simple job by any means. It's not going to consist... of that many tasks, but it'll be difficult regardless. So the interior on this is leather... I mean, the middle part of it, of course. The carpet, well, it's carpet. Everything above that is Alcantara, which can get a bit tricky to clean and in this case is seriously filthy. I highly doubt that this has ever been deep cleaned since 2010. Or just cleaned, for that matter. I'm fairly sure they just left it be. Best case scenario, they wiped it down with a rag and called it a day. 
As for what we're doing well, we'll wash the exterior, clean the cabin, as well as, I don't know, give the engine bay a once-over, but without going too crazy. We just need to make it look nice. I mean, they are gonna put this in a museum after us, so it has to look the part. Anyway, enough talk. I've said plenty as it is. It is high time for me to get to work. Washing the engine bay. two-phase exterior wash. Okay, so that does it for phase one. The wheels have undergone a two-phase, we've cleaned the fender lining, the car is almost a peach. Almost. Now the whole point of phase two is to remove the static dirt. Right? The problem is that there are so many angles here that your room probably has fewer. Just look at all of those concave and convex shapes. The sharp edges and so on. A regular old SpongeBob, as in a macroporous sponge, is not ideal for the job. Which is why we'll be using a special microfiber fleece glove that's going to help effectively clean all of the tight spots. It's a very comfortable fit. You dip it into water, rinse it, and proceed to wash the car. It is such a nice thing. Right, let us begin the second wash phase.
Okay, so now that I'm done cleaning the exterior, it's time for the mandatory chemical treatment. This will include removing bitumen and metal particulates from the body panels. Also bugs and any other greasy residue that there might be on them. Chemical treatment. The chemical treatment phase is complete. We can cross the two-phase wash off the to-do list. Now it's time for some protective coating. We are currently in the dry cleaning area. The car is mostly dry, aside from a few drops here and there. But that's not a problem. Time to tend to the interior. As for what we're doing, well, we're certainly not taking anything apart for the deep cleaning. The reason being that we might not be able to reinstall certain elements after removing them. With this being a concept car that was put together way back in 2010. So honestly, to hell with that. I don't want any part of it. So yeah, we won't be taking anything apart. But for the sake of removing the carpet, we are gonna have to take out some of the seats. Specifically the ones in the front and the ones in the back. We are not gonna be touching the second row. And since all of the seats are capable of sliding back and forth, that's just gonna make this super easy. Then we vacuum the carpet, work it with a tornado, and get to work on the headliner. Interior deep clean without taking it apart. Now we are going to be doing the headliner, the pillar trim and everything else covered in Alcantara. We are done with the carpet. We've knocked the sand out of there, so that's all good and well. As for how we go about this job, we'll be using a fabric cleaner and a soft brush. We'll apply the agent using a tornado and carefully clean everything. The Alcantara is actually peeling off in some places due to old age. So yeah, apply the cleaner, work on small areas. Then soak it up with a microfiber towel. I'll then use a special brush to smoothen out the Alcantara and make sure it looks nice. Now whether I can clean out the yellow spots, that I'm not certain, but we'll see how it goes. Alcantara is quite an easy material to clean overall. Anyway, let's get to work.
This is a pretty cool solution. A seat that you can flip around so you can chill like this. Now, unfortunately, we can't afford to do that. Here's what we need to do now. We've cleaned the headliner, the Alcantara bits. It all looks super nice. Now, the great thing about working on this car is that there is leather everywhere. This might seem like regular plastic, but in fact, it's plastic wrapped in leather. So is this. I mean, there are certain bits that are plastic, but not too many. Man, I just love that so much of it is leather. I mean, it is way easier to clean than fabric or plastic. Right, now I'll proceed to finish cleaning all of the leather, as well as the associated plastic bits, and in the end I'm going to tend to the carpet. Okay, let's get to work. So this right here is the third row seat. It looks pretty nasty, and it was even dirtier before I sat on it and uh, wiped it with my own pants. You could say I made this a bit easier for myself. Anyway, there is a lot of dirt inside the pores, and I highly doubt it has ever been cleaned. As for what I'll be doing, I'm going to blow off all of the dust, as well as any crumbs and all of that. Then I'll wipe it all down with a damp microfiber towel. After that I'm going to carefully clean out each and every seam. By the way, this plastic has been painted, so it requires special treatment.
Now we get to that all-important part of cleaning the cabin, which is washing the carpet. After that we'll reinstall the seats, do a few finishing touches, and that's it. Okay, well, no use stalling, it's time to clean the carpet and do everything else as well. Okay, here's the situation. I'm done cleaning the car. Now I'm gonna get the seats in there, rub down the glass and apply some leather conditioning cream. Okay, the car is clean. There is so much leather in there. I don't think I've ever seen this much inside a car. There is an enormous amount of it. It's too bad that I couldn't fix some of the defects. But then this is 12 years old. And all this time it's just been sitting. And God knows how it's been treated. As a result, it faded, turned yellow, so yum. Time and the elements have been pretty ruthless to it. Now that we've cleaned the leather, it's time to apply protective coating. That should make it... very nice, the car is gonna be happy. protective coating. Looking at it right now, my eyes are about to pop out from how brightly this car is shining. This concept car, rather. Anyway, allow us to demonstrate the results of our work.
Very nice. This was a peculiar experience, working on a car like this, with only two key components, Alcantara and a leather, right, I was blanking there for a second. Anyway, so, there were certain difficulties, like the leather was in subpar condition. Over the years, it has been absorbing a lot of fluids, and unfortunately, there's just no way to clean any of it out, unless you repaint the leather. But I mean, we did what we could, the headliner looks nice, we've successfully cleaned the trim on the pillars, the carpet, all of the seats, and overall this Marussia F2 looks… let's just say it's ready to be put in a museum. Andre still has to do some mechanical work to it, like get the back doors to work once again, and that's it. Let's see what he has to say about the job we've done. I'm honestly quite curious. Greetings to you. What's up? Okay, so we've done everything we promised we would do with that Marusia. Vacuumed the interior, wiped it down with a rag. It's looking very nice. It did take us a couple of days to simply wipe it clean and vacuum the interior. There was so much dirt in there. I mean, our workshop is very dusty. Yeah, we noticed. There was plenty more in there aside from just dust. But then again, we didn't extract nearly as much dust from the carpet of this thing compared to normal cars that are used on the regular. Probably has something to do with it barely ever being driven. You know, one serious shortcoming that I noticed is a complete lack of floor mats anywhere inside the car. We ought to make some proprietary floor mats for it, like with the name of our workshop on them. Sounds like a good idea. Okay, I think it's time for us to check the car out and for you to collect it. <laughs> it's like that effect you get when... Oh wow, the wheels look brand new! They even got the... Did you get us new wheels? Nope, all we did was clean them and make them look nice. They look perfect. Yeah, they're super clean, but they've literally got no miles on them. You can take them off and sell them as new. I noticed that the wheel arches were super easy to clean on this. Washing that particular area gave me a very pleasant feeling. The interior, on the other hand, with me being unable to open this door, we'll set up an electric door opener. It'll be great. You should have done that before you met with us. But hey, I mean, it wasn't that big a problem. Anyway, here's the car. We thoroughly washed the exterior and covered it with some hard wax, literally with one of the best materials out there. Look at the shine. You can have a look around. By the way, the interior smells very nice. Oh, yeah. That's the smell of fresh leather, something that has been absent in here for the past 12 years. Now, the leather has deteriorated due to old age, and with how much I'd imagine the car had been on the road touring. So whatever leaked fluids seeped into the leather, or wherever it faded, that we can't fix, if only you were to reupholster it. That's something we're definitely not doing. It's too damn expensive. Even in this state, the car looks fantastic. And just look at that shine. You know, at first we thought there wouldn't be any point going into the engine bay, however... Please, I've only got one free hand. The car can even be put on display with the hood open. It looks brand new. Yes, it does. This is great. I feel like you've spent an entire week on this. 
Well, it wasn't necessarily a week. As a matter of fact, it took slightly less than that. It took half as long. I feel like it was dirtier when it just came out of the factory. Honestly, I have no idea what a Sangyong looks like from the factory. Take a look at this. This tag right here is a very important detail. Wait, what? Oh, what, you didn't see it? I literally didn't notice it when I was doing the engine bay. Even when I was blowing air onto this box, I still didn't notice it. Aren't I an inattentive fellow? You were cleaning a Marusium. Honestly, these are some incredible results. I expected it to be slightly nicer, but the engine looks brand new. I should bring you my lot of wagon, man. Can you make my car just as clean? You know, this really isn't the heart of the car now, is it? Everything Marussia about it is actually back there. I don't know, did they even plan on using this specific engine? We literally have no idea. Yeah, we couldn't resist the urge to brand this car with our own logo. This is where you wash your car. I think we might as well keep it here forever. Great. This is just fantastic. You know, the smell that hit me when I opened the trunk literally gave me goosebumps. I'm tripping off of this right now. You know how good this makes me feel? The car is like new. Seriously, this is fantastic. Great, well, I'm glad you appreciate what we've done. Awesome. It's so nice that you'll have to ask people to take their shoes off if they want to spend some time inside this prototype. We actually were taking our shoes off before getting in. You washed the headliner, oh my goodness. This is so nice, it's unreal. Alcantara is a great material, as in it's easy to clean. And amazingly enough, well, I've seen this car in various situations, like covered in snow when it was being transported. My point is, it was exposed to the elements year-round, and so there were stains on the Alcantara, which we were able to remove, and that's nice. What I'm seeing surpassed all of my expectations by a country mile. Seriously, it feels as if the car is freshly made. Well, good. Then our efforts weren't in vain. Okay, now it's definitely shut. It certainly is. There's a rope to open it. Yeah, I know about the rope. There had to be some way to get it open. This gives me a really good feeling. And Andre, I did not expect you to react so positively. That felt nice, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, we receive cars not only from our viewers, we also get our hands on exclusive vehicles such as this one from time to time. At the very least, we're dealing with a piece of Russian automotive history. I guess you can say that this is our legacy. I mean, say what you want about it. But at the end of the day, this was designed and engineered in Russia. So on behalf of the entire team over at Spectre Design Bureau, and from me personally, I just want to say props to you guys. Like, hats off to you. You obviously do a great job with washing cars. I have never seen such results. I mean, we've gotten offers from a lot of different studios, but we were always a bit skeptical. We actually did take part in certain projects before, and though the results weren't bad by any means, I have never seen anything like this. It is amazing how fresh it looks. <laughs> you know, there was this fun ritual we used to have. We have a car cover for a Marussia B2, right? We used to cover our company beater with it, a lot of station wagon, to make it run when it was broken. The funny thing is, it actually worked. In a similar vein, perhaps this is a magical place where you bring a car, leave it, then open the gate and see it looking brand new. <laughs> we should give it a try. We have a frame back at our facility. Perhaps we bring it over here and it'll start to grow parts? 
<laughs> mm, who knows? Perhaps it'll even work, though I'm not sure. We will give it a try. Thanks again. Yeah, well, apparently we'll be taking part in some weird experiments. And on that note, it's time to wrap up this episode. This was a really interesting car. And we were paid visit by a legend, no less. Who's trying to revive the past, I guess you can say. Okay, my friends, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Subscribe, give us a like, share your comments. And don't forget about that notification bell. See ya! Adios! Museum of the Soviet Era.